In this video, we are going to convert this Philips R660 mini branded head unit into a Bluetooth head unit. Hey Mini Enthusiasts, how are you doing? Welcome back, I hope you're having a great day and I hope you're all well. So let's get straight into it. In this video, we are gonna convert this Philips R660 mini branded head unit into a Bluetooth head unit and it's gonna be an integral solution. So no plugging in cassettes with Bluetooth heads or no trickery going on. We're gonna uh, make it have integral Bluetooth by soldering a Bluetooth amplifier onto the board. So I'm gonna take you through how I'm gonna do it. I must admit, I can't take the credit for this. There was a guy on Facebook that posted uh, images of where you needed to connect the wires and what you needed to do the kit, and I followed those instructions. So um, if you're the guy watching this, let me know and I'll credit you in the video. But basically, it's really, really simple. Cost-wise, it's gonna cost you around about 13 quid to do. Uh, the two main components you need is a uh, Bluetooth receiver uh, stroke amplifier uh, that's 12 volt and as you can see that, that actually costs about £10. I'll try and put the links to these in the description down the bottom and you also need a momentary switch which is just a latching switch. Uh, in fact not momentary, you, need, you can use either momentary or, la or latching but you need a switch in the system. The other things I purchased just to make life a little bit easier was some uh, thin wire. I'm not sure what gauge this is, but the internal core of the wire is only about half a mil, 0.6 of a mil. It needs to be pretty small because as you can see, circuit board is absolutely tiny. Um, and <clears throat> as I say, thanks to the guy that posted on Facebook, and the actual listing on eBay shows some blown up pictures which you can print off. So that is this circuit board. It's blown up large, so you can basically read without a magnifying glass what each pin and terminal is because you've got to solder all these on yourself. Um, and this is what the guy provided on Facebook, which was an image of the back of the circuit board on the head unit that you can solder onto. So this actually, when you look at this, it looks quite easy, but these pins on the back here, those solder joints are really, really tiny. I struggle with my eyes. So um, difficulty wise, it is a little bit fiddly. I wouldn't be tackling this unless you were competent at soldering and confident in what you want to do. Uh, tools wise, pretty straightforward. A screwdriver with some Torx bits some flat, uh, soldered, some solder, um, a gas soldering iron. You do need a really fine tip on the soldering iron, some wire cutters, some wire strippers, and that should be it. So yeah, let me get into it and I'll try and take you through this as I'm doing it. So the first thing we need to do is strip this head unit right down and you really need to get it down to nothing and you need to get a printed circuit board out the head unit itself. So there's quite a few screws that have got to come out the head unit. First thing, obviously, is just starting by getting the top cover off. You need to get the front fascia off to begin with, which is pretty straightforward. Just the one screw in the front, the ribbon cables off, and then the rest just unclips from the side. So there we go, face you off, put that somewhere safe. The tape deck needs to come out, which is held in by four screws. Yeah. 
you might want to organize these screws so that you don't get confused with where they go because there are short screws and long screws time wise this is probably going to take us I guess I've had a bit of practice because I have already done the one on PL that one actually took me nigh on a couple of hours start to finish I reckon I can probably do this one in about 40 minutes so tape deck out put that somewhere safe uh, next bit is getting this printed circuit board out so there's a few screws that hold the board down there's also I think this is a MOSFET in the side or a transistor um, so it's bolted on the side there's more screws than you think there are with this when you think you've got them all out you find another one in the side that holds in that uh, MOSFET or transistor you need to remember that because it is longer than all the rest it's always one isn't there if it don't feel right don't force it right this is the main printed circuit board this is the bit we want to get to and concentrate on so as you can see uh, it is very very complicated on the back of there and what we need to do is match up that picture with that wiring diagram which is pretty difficult we're going to come back to that in a minute because the first thing we need to do is solder some wires onto this board so we've got some instructions here of how to do it so there's three sort of output wires which need to be soldered to the board um, there is uh, power supply wires and then there is a switch wires so the first ones we're going to start with is these three um, wires here which wire which actually output the sound to the printed circuit board we're just going to start out all the wires will be too long to begin with and we'll cut them back as we need so let's start with our negative first so as I look at the board, it's the bottom left hand side. You need phenomenal eyesight for this, you really do. Right, so that's our two, that's our positive and negative connected up. This next bit we're connecting is just left, right and ground for their output. And then the last two wires we need are just the wires for the switch. Right, we're just going to heat sink these wires just to neaten it up a bit. Now this is a tricky bit, we need to work out where, so this is the left channel, right channel and ground, that's 12 volt positive, that's 12 volt negative, we need to find out on this board where those connectors are. Luckily I've got a bit of a head start because I have done this before. first bit's relatively simple because there's a nice big bit of board to solder to. So we've got our left, right and ground on there. We've got our live. The earth we're actually going to do something different with because it's the picture differs very slightly from what we've got there you have to be really really careful with this connector down the bottom here right so this circuit board can be carefully assembled back in now
making sure our wires are not going to touch the casing. Cable management round here because this is quite tricky. Right guys, sorry, I've got a bit of a sweat on there. Um, so this bit of printed circuit board round here, it is really difficult soldering onto it and where I moved the wire, it actually peeled away from the board. So I've actually ended up running a link wire down here. Uh, I think unless you are really, really good at soldering, you really need to trace this positive and find out where you can get a nice, strong link onto the board because they ain't very strong. Right, so I mentioned about the negative earlier. There's a much easier way of finding the negative and these posts where they screw down onto the chassis, any of them is a negative. So you can just get the negative wire and twist it round them to make life a little bit easier. Right, just need to get all the board back together now. Right, so um, that's our momentary or our latching switch done now. Uh, th what the switch allows us to do is put it into pairing mode, basically. So you switch it, you switch it on and hold it, and that goes into pairing mode. That's why you, I'm using a latching switch. And the idea is we'll fit it somewhere inside here so that it lines up with the eject button. So we can use the eject button to put it in and out of pairing mode. Uh, we also need to uh, disconnect the motor. So quite simply, I think I'm just going to cut the cable to go to the motor. And that's simply because we don't want the tape deck whirring around. Right, so I think what I'm going to do is try and rig this switch up actually to the fast forward button because the eject button we're going to need because you still need to insert a tape to get it to switch over to Bluetooth. So I'm still going to need to use that button. So, but the fast reverse and fast forward buttons I'm not going to need again. And actually, when I put the cassette deck in, it all stays in place. So that's cool. Ideally, I'd want a bit of heat sink on here, but I haven't got any this big, so. Right, so the last little bit then is to mount this latching switch which is going to go round about here and we're just going to use some hot snot right so i think we're there not not the neatest job in the world but um as you can see that fast forward button now now operates the latching switch there is just enough room to get the lid on. So all we need to do now is get it back in the car, pair it up, make sure it works. And the jobs are good, isn't it? Right, so final update, we've done one last thing. So I tried mounting the latching switch up on this fast forward button. I just couldn't get it in and get it mounted properly. So in the end, I've mounted it on the board down the bottom here, behind the face panel. And let me just put this back together and I'll show you how it operates. But obviously that's again, just held on there with hot glue. The most important thing, you only need to use this switch when you wanna pair a new device up. 
So you're not using it all the time. It's just once in a blue moon. When you want to pair something in, you have to be able to press the switch and turn it on. So you could put it, you could put it external to the head unit if you wanted. You could just put it loose in there, and every time you wanted to pair it up, just pull the head unit forward, pop the cover off, and press the switch. I mean, there's many ways of doing it, but you do only need to use the switch when you want to pair a new device in there. Let me get this back together and I'll show you how to switch, how we access the switch, because it's hidden behind the front panel here. Right, so the way this switch works, it's pretty simple. When you've got it in the car and you want to switch it into pairing mode, you literally just pop the front cover off here. There's actually a hole inside here. I don't know what it's for, but I've used that for the switch. And I just put my little drill bit inside. And I can hear the switch switch on. So that's switched on now. That's in pairing mode. I put the cover on, pair up my phone, and then all I need to do is just go in here now and switch it off afterwards, and that's off. You can, you can leave this in pairing mode. So you can just leave that switch on. You could just connect the wires together and not have a switch at all. The only problem with leaving it in pairing mode is it means every time you want to use it, you have to pair your phone back up to it. And what I found was you have to forget the device and then repair up to it. But you you could do it like that. It's not, you know, it only takes a, a couple of seconds to pair your phone up. Let's get this in the car now, pair it up and see if it all works. Right, so that's it, job done. I would say start to finish, it has taken us over an hour, probably about an hour and a half in total. Not an easy job to do, but I'm quite pleased with the results. So we've paired up the head unit now, or paired up to the phone. Obviously, it's on radio at the moment. And as you can hear, the radio is working fine. So basically, when we want to use Bluetooth, we've just got a, a tape. We put the tape in. And obviously, the tape's not turning because we've disconnected the motor inside. And that now will be working off Bluetooth. If we want to switch back to radio, just eject of planning and delivering. And if the tape's left in, when you turn the stereo off and when you turn it back on again, you get a audible warning or audible note that is connected to the phone. So that's connected now. And at any time, if we want to pair up a new device, we just take the faceplate off the front, push the button inside there, pair the device up, push the button back in again to take it off pairing mode. And that is it. So I hope you've enjoyed this video. I hope it's useful to you. I'm sure you can do this upgrade to other types of head units. Uh, this is how I've done my one. It's pretty straightforward to do, but a little bit fiddly. So please give it a thumbs up if you liked it. Do consider subscribing, hit the notification button, do all that good stuff. And I hope it's useful to someone else.